Ah, I got a new car. And we unlock some new races again, because this game's pacing is weird. Got the Mustang Boss 302. Yes, I did paint it orange. I don't care. This car also handles ridiculously good. It's like they basically put all of their time and development into like the classic muscles stuff, I swear. Like it's so much more fun than some of the like more expensive cars. Did I? Because I just wrecked your car. You don't have any. <laughs> like, the, the Widow Girl let him get away. It's like, bitch, you always let me get away because you can't keep up. <laughs> See? <laughs> Where did he come from? That guy just span in when there was. Okay. Oh, shit. That guy knocked me over here. Ah, fuck. Now. Oh, I need to get into the checkpoint, otherwise it will beat me up. You know, nothing more edgy than like the checkpoints acting like bureaucrats and going, Oh, you didn't go through the fucking thing properly. Go back. Tick the right box. How street racer of you. <laughs> oh, you didn't follow the rules. <laughs> you invent. Who's running the street races in this city? Is it the post office? Please get the right form if you want to join in our races. <laughs> you want to hear about my dumb real life shit? Uh, involving driving, I mean, not just trauma. <laughs> uh, one time when I was driving on a, from a night shift job, I've had many night shift jobs when I was younger. Uh, this one was stock taking. There are dudes that go in for security purposes after everyone's shut the shop down once every month or so or quarter to take stock of places like M&S, all of the clothing and department stores to see how much was stolen and if it co corresponds with their like sales then they can work out how much has been stolen and yeah, around 10% of everything gets stolen. <laughs> and sometimes it's by the staff, but they want to make sure it's not the staff and it's just randomers who they can try and crack down upon later. Because if it's staff, it's like they can immediately take control of it, right? So, um, yeah, that taught me a lot about things. Like if you wear a uniform looking piece of equipment, uh, piece of equipment, clothing, and you just walk into the back of like any supermarket or business and just walk in like you're supposed to be there. No one questions you. Like, you just can walk in. Um, but yeah, I was coming back late one night from one of these, and it was like, I want to say November or something. Uh, and I was driving home and I was coming back on the motorway and it's a stretch of motorway famous for never having speed traps or cops waiting. So everyone drives it really fast at night. And I was, I came off of the, I was going down the off ramp, uh, to join the junction I needed to get off at. And I was still doing 50 miles per hour <laughs> in my Lupo. And, um, he had a VW Lupo back then, and it wasn't the fancy GTI model, it was like a base model. <clears throat> and uh, it was like, there was surface water or there was ice or something, and there was this guy behind me, and I was just like, yeah, I'm going to keep going fast, and I went round the off-ramp roundabout, and my car lost control. And then I just held it in a sick drift, <laughs> somehow, like I just went, oh shit, the car's spinning. S steer out, steer out of it, and I went like that, and I just did this sick drift about a quarter to half of the roundabout, no, three quarters of the roundabout, because I was going in and then turning right, so third exit, <laughs> right, like drifting around it like s sick as fuck, and I was like, oh my god, I nearly died, but that was the hypest shit. <laughs>
<laughs> did a sick drift in a full front wheel drive lupo at 50 miles an hour around the roundabout. And I know some guy was behind me tailgating me the whole time, so I know he saw it. Uh, he didn't overtake me either because I was still going faster than him coming exiting the roundabout and I bet he was like fuck man <laughs> I texted my friend straight afterwards it was like four or five in the morning and I said to my mate oh man oh man you wouldn't believe the sick shit I did and his response surprisingly came pretty quickly and he was not impressed and I was really impressed and he was just like Dude, you could have fucking died, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> but like, you're missing the point where I did a six skill, high skill Gymkhana shit, and Ken blocked my way out of there. <laughs> and he was like, what the fuck's wrong with you? And I was like, what? <laughs> no one's cool with it, man. <laughs> I'm glad they don't have impound in your car in this game. Because that's like, I hate it when that happens. They take your car, that's just bullshit. I have everywhere to run. Fuck you, cop. Bah bah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I've driven in a few countries. Uh, I found the roads in New Zealand to be really nice, and there's hardly any traffic, uh, so it's really good fun. But holy shit, the amount of people who've driven their cars off of cliffs in New Zealand because there's no guardrail, and they're just like, oh, you know, for insurance purposes, very often they'll just throw their car off the edge of this, like, you know, clapped out crappy car. They'll just drive it off of the edge of a cliff. Not while they're in it, of course. <laughs> just push it off the edge but sometimes you'll be you'll hear of stories of like from high school onwards people like st your students will be dying in car accidents because they were street racing at night down a country road that's like a winding guard railless road on really great tarmac don't get me wrong but like these kids are like 15 to like 18 or driving age boy racer age and uh it. Some of them literally just drive off the edge of a cliff. These guys were street racing in my local area, down a road known as Dyer's Pass, and then people were fucking dying. <laughs> and everyone was just like, huh, don't know why that was happening. It's like a guardrailless cliffside. I nearly drove off the edge whilst just minding my own business because I was driving a shitty automatic that I didn't know how to drive properly. <laughs> Like, and like you, you just used to see hollowed out husks of cars just falling off the edge getting like you know recovered and shit and like people saying yeah this student died recently and his girlfriend did because he drove his car off a fucking cliff like a dipshit <laughs> you're like but really nice roads really fun but it's almost like that behavior it almost encourages that behavior but not really those people will do that no matter what right uh, I mean, I drove my car off. I nearly drove a motorbike that I was running off of a mountain once in Nepal. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was rainy season, I was in Kathmandu, and I rented a Royal Enfield Bullet 350cc. And I went, you know what, I'm just gonna get my map, and I'm just on my phone, and I'm just gonna drive from like. Tamel, which is like in the center of like Kathmandu city and drive to the nearest mountain and I drove to the nearest mountain Got lost several times on the way back and had to ask for directions. Luckily people in Nepal speak really good English But a little scary to just pull up into the middle of fucking nowhere enter a restaurant and say hey, man I don't know where I am <laughs> That was after going up a muddy wet rainy season mountain that was like the road was entirely a mudslide and I nearly drove the rented Royal Enfield with myself on it off of the edge of a again a guardrailless dirt track that was mostly mud off this mountain it was 
fucking nuts. Uh, didn't tell the guy I was renting the, uh... Oh, fuck. I went... I kind of... Oh. Ah, oh, fuck. It's too heavy. Oh, no. Oh, I've got enough heat to get max level now, so... Turns out it is 50. It's okay, I can, I can do it. Come on, car. The little car that can. Yeah, so, um... New Zealand, great roads, encourages some really stupid behavior, and the attitude New Zealand has is you can have insurance if you want, if you crash, that's your fucking fault, and you should be more careful, and it's genuinely dangerous like Australia to crash in the middle of nowhere, because people may not come down that road for days, and you're just trapped 50 miles from anywhere. With no water, no contact, because there's no signal, because it's the middle of fucking nowhere, because it's New Zealand. South Island, New Zealand. And, um... Yeah, you might not have anything. You might just have nothing out there for ages, so... I mean, it's a pretty place to die, but I'd rather not, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so, uh... <clears throat> You know, they really encourage their people to actually be sensible and think for themselves, which I like, because it's less nannying, which is like what the UK is very... UK is known often colloquially as a nanny state, because it's constantly like, you can't have this because someone will be irresponsible. You're, you're too stupid to have this. One guy did something fucking dumb with it, so now we have to put precautions and, like, licensing all over it. And, like... In New Zealand, they're like, nah, man, just do whatever you fuck you want, but if you die, no one is going to mourn you because you're a fucking idiot. Don't drive your car at 100 miles an hour in the middle of nowhere and then total it. Like, duh. <laughs> because in New Zealand, you're less likely to endanger other people's lives whilst driving on the road because there's less traffic if you're going to do that because you're more likely to hit a sheep, a rock, or fall off a cliff. In which case, it's just your dumbass. But, like, at the same time... <laughs> Try to be sensible, man. Like, freedom only works, and liberty only really works, provided the average person using it isn't a fucking moron. <laughs> and unfortunately, there's always one <laughs> that fucks it up for everyone else, because he's like, herp a derp, I'm gonna act irresponsibly, because there's no law against it, and now there is. <laughs> so... This car is may actually be even more fun to drive than the Viper, although the Viper's really good fun. I'd say the Charger is more fun. This is pretty good though. It's like similar, but it's got a different kind of like grip. Okay, so we did Discovery B, Discovery C. I didn't see Discovery A. I'm trying to look for news. That's not, that's a circuit race that unlocked really late for some fucking reason. Uh, and there's like the heat. The, these are the high heat races. You actually earn money and parts. You can see here, it's an elite differential part. So I've already got that. You really want the ultimate part because they're the ones that are unique to high heat races. You see it says elite down here. Um, <clears throat> it, the game will let you engage in high heat races that if you don't read them will let you win the, the exotic second stage part for something which is like I already have this <laughs> you know like I've had this for a long time you want to get ultimate and then ultimate plus but they're really hard and then like yeah, well, well I, I think I've got a capture of that, so we'll show that next time. But this is a really fun car. Uh, the Charger is really good fun, and I'm tweaking the Plymouth Cooter as we speak. Uh, just because I realized the problem, I put drag tires on it, and it basically rigids up the uh, handling to the point it can't go around corners at all anymore. <laughs> so you have to take them off and put like real 
useful tires on them to get it to actually do what the boss is doing here, which is actually drifting and getting around the corner. But yeah, maxed out the uh, rep here. You're a terrible example to young children. That was awesome. Yeah, man, screw them kids. I'll see you next time for high heat race. Thank <laughs> you.